What's going on guys, Creativity Clarified here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this animation using After Effects. Now, some of you will recognize the animation from my 400 subscriber video where I accidentally used the words Among Us and just couldn't resist adding in the visual joke. And since Among Us is trending right now, I thought it would be fun to give you guys a little behind the scenes look at how I put that animation together. So obviously the first thing you'll want to do is play about five hours of the game, you know, for inspirational purposes, until you get killed so many times as crewmate that you decide to actually start the tutorial. Which brings us to step one, creating the characters. So in a brand new After Effects project file, I'm going to click on New Composition, and then I'm going to name this composition Among Us Orange, and I'm going to go for a width of 500, a height of 500, frame rate of 59.94, and a duration of about 10 seconds should be fine for this animation. So I'm going to click OK, and this is where we're going to draw our character. So I'm actually going to double click in the project panel to import a sketch that I created separately. Now normally you could use an image off of Google, and that's normally what I would do, but for the purposes of a YouTube video, I'm going to try to use something that is not going to give me a copyright strike. So I'm going to set the opacity to about 33% so I can see what I'm doing. And then we're going to want to draw each shape of this character using the pen tool. So you can click on the pen tool in the upper left corner of the screen, or I can just press G to get the pen tool selected. Now, by default, the pen tool is going to create a mask for whatever layer is selected, and that is not what we want. So I'm going to undo that and click Control Shift A to deselect all of the layers. And now the pen tool will instead create a shape. Now I have my fill set to none, and I have my stroke set to a nice black color, and the width is five pixels. Again, this is just so that I can see what I'm doing with the shape I'm creating without blocking the layer beneath. So these are some good settings for the drawing stage. Now I'm just gonna go in and draw each of the shapes, and you can do this by clicking and dragging at the different defining points of the curves. It takes a little bit of playing and getting used to to figure out how to use the pen tool correctly, but always keep in mind that if you make a mistake, you can always go in and adjust your curves as needed. And of course, for a character like this, it really doesn't have to be perfect. So you'll just draw each shape, press Control Shift A again to deselect everything, and then you can start on your next shape and repeat the process. Once you're happy with the shapes that you've created, you'll want to go into the layer panel and delete the image that you were tracing from, and then rename each of these layers to a more appropriate name. So I'm going to change the backpack layer to backpack, change the body layer to body, and the glass mask area I'm just going to call glass. Now we'll want to adjust our shape layers so that they have the correct stroke width and fill colors. So I'm going to select the body and the backpack, change the stroke width to 20, and give it a nice fill color. You can choose any color that you want, but I'm going to go for this nice orange color that I have saved. And then for the glass, I'm going to change the stroke width to 20 once again, and set the fill color to about a 60% gray. So now I want to add a white highlight to the glass area of our drawing, and I want it to be above the background gray color of the glass, but below the black outline. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over to the layer panel, select the glass layer, and press Control D twice to create two copies. I will name the top layer glass outline, name the middle layer glass highlight, and then name the background layer glass background. Then I'll go in and adjust these layers. So I'll go into the glass outline shape properties, delete the fill color, but leave the stroke alone so that this layer will just have the black outline. Then I'll go into my glass highlight shape properties and delete the stroke, but leave the fill. And while we're at it, I'll go down into the fill properties and change the fill color to a bright white. Then I'll go into the glass background and delete the stroke, but leave the fill as is. So now if I select the glass highlight layer, scale it down a bit and move it into a desirable position, maybe adjust the points of the curve with the pen tool just a little bit, you'll see that we now have the white highlight sandwiched in between the two layers, just like we want it. Now you could accomplish the exact same thing with one shape layer if you put multiple shapes on that same shape layer and ordered them in the exact same way. I find it's just a little bit easier to use multiple layers, so that's what we're doing. And with that done, our character drawing is complete and we are ready to move on to the next step, which is setting up for animation. 
So first off, we'll want to create multiple copies of this character in different colors. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the project panel, select the Among Us orange composition and duplicate it twice with Control D. Then I will rename these compositions to Among Us red and Among Us blue. Then I'm just going to open up these compositions by double clicking and change the colors accordingly. Up next, we'll want to create a composition to house the final animation. So I will go over to the project panel, right click and select new composition. And we'll want to go for a width of 1920, a height of 1080, and leave all of the other settings the same as they were before. So just click on OK. And then we'll want to arrange our characters in the scene. So I'm going to click on Among Us Red and then control click orange and blue to get them all selected. Then I will just drag them down into the layer panel to add them to to our composition. Again, I'm going to click Control Shift A to deselect everything and get the selection tool, which you can grab in the upper left corner or with the V key. And I'm going to use that tool to separate out our layers so that I can see all of the characters separately. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do before we move the characters into position is to make sure that the anchor point is set to the correct position. Because as it stands right now, if I select these layers and press R to view the rotation property and start rotating these characters, you'll see that they rotate around the center point of the body. And that's not exactly what I want for this animation. I actually want them to rotate around a point somewhere between the feet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by pressing A to preview the anchor point, And then I'll just adjust this until it's at the center point of the feet of each of the characters. Now, when I press R to view the rotation property and rotate them again, you'll see they rotate around the feet rather than the center of the body, which is what I want for this animation. So now I'm going to drag these characters into position. So I want orange to be down here in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. I want red to be peeking out from the side. So the first thing I'll do is set the rotation to about 28 degrees and I'll drag him into position over on this left side of the screen. And then I want blue to do the same thing, but from the right side of the screen. So the first thing we'll need to do is flip blue so he's facing the other way. Easiest way to do that is to select Among Us Blue in the layer panel, press the S key to view the scale property, unlink the width and height constraint so that you can scale them individually. And then we will change the width property, that's the first one, to negative 100. Then next, we'll go into the rotation by pressing R and set the rotation to negative 28 degrees so that he mirrors blue and then we'll drag him into position. Now, one more thing I wanna do just as a sanity check before we start animating is to make sure that red and blue can be rotated out of frame without adjusting the position. And it looks like they're both in the clear so we can jump straight into the next step, which is animating the keyframes. Now this is the part of the animation process where things start to get really interesting. You'll notice that I've added some markers to the timeline to help keep our animation organized because I want our characters to slide into frame over the course of the first second of the animation. Then I want them to hang out until about the two second mark and then fade away over the course of 45 frames or three quarters of a second. So I'm going to go ahead and snap the playhead to the arrival marker since our characters are already in their arrival positions. I'm going to select red and blue, press the R key to view the rotation property, and then click on the stopwatch to keyframe those properties. For orange, I'm going to select orange and press P to animate the position property, and then click the stopwatch there as well. Now I'm going to do something a little bit counterintuitive and animate these keyframes in reverse. So I'm going to drag the playhead back to the beginning of the animation at the zero frame and adjust these properties so that each of the characters are off screen. So for red and blue, that just means adjusting the rotation until they're out of frame. And for orange, it means adjusting the Y property of the position, that's the second one, until until it's just out of frame, maybe with a little margin of safety. And now when we play that back, we'll see that our characters slide into frame. To do the departure keyframes, we can actually just copy and paste the ones we've already created, but in reverse. So I'm going to copy the arrival keyframe to the departure point on each of these properties by selecting them and pressing Control C and Control V. Then I'll do the same thing for the ending point using the starting keyframes. And once we've done that, we can drag the playhead back to the beginning and press spacebar to preview the overall timing of our animation. It looks like I low-key forgot to add in the talk bubble for red, so I'm going to speed run that real quick. I'll press Control T to get out my type tool and left click to write my message. And now to animate the talk bubble, we're just going to use a simple fade. So I'm going to go to the layer panel, select the text and shape layer, 
press T to view the transparency property, drag the playhead to the arrival point, and click on the stopwatch at 100%. Then we'll go back to about the 30 frame mark and drag this down to 0%. Then of course we'll go to do the reverse on the departure by copying and pasting from the arrival point, go to about the 230 mark, and copy from the starting point. Now with that done, we can move our playhead back to the beginning and preview our animation with the talk bubble added in. And it looks pretty good, but there is one more thing that we can do to smooth out our animation before moving on to the next step. And that is collapse all of our layers, select all of our layers, press the U hotkey to view all of our animated keyframes, select them all with the box selection tool, and then press F9. F9 is the magic key of After Effects. I use it all the time, and what it basically does is create some smoothness to your keyframe. So instead of just going strictly linear, zero to 100, starting and stopping instantaneously, what it does is it adds some smoothing to that, kind of like you would expect in real life. There's acceleration and deceleration. Now at this stage, the animation is pretty good, but it's not quite amazing. All of the objects are still moving at exactly the same time, which makes it look a little bit rigid and unrealistic. And an easy way to fix that is to just play with the timings of the keyframes and the smoothing, the easing of the keyframes just a little bit more. So that's going to be our final step, adding dynamic movement. Now the first thing we'll want to do is make our animation's movements more dramatic. And the secret to dramatic movement in animation is something called keyframe velocity. So to give you guys a really quick crash course on what that is, you'll notice that I've hidden all of our layers except for our red character. And this is just to give us an easy way of visualizing this concept. So what I'm going to do is go down to the animation timeline, select all of my rotation keyframes for the red character, and then click on this button called the graph editor button. Then I'm just going to right click on the graph and make sure that edit value graph is selected. Now what this graph basically does is gives us a visual representation of the value of our property over time. And you'll notice that coming out of and going into each of these keyframes, there's just a little bit of a curve to our motion graph. And what this basically represents is the smoothing or the easing that we applied to our keyframes when we pressed the F9 hotkey. So yeah, you've actually already edited your keyframe velocities. So that gives us a pretty nice motion. You'll see that there's just a little bit of acceleration and deceleration, which is definitely better than none at all. But to make this more dramatic, I'm just going to want to set the incoming velocity influence of the arrival keyframe out to about 80% and then the outgoing velocity of the departure keyframe to 80% as well. And what this is going to do is make our animation much faster in the beginning and spend more time slowing down on the arrival, like so. And then on the departure, you'll notice that it's going to spend more time speeding up and get really fast towards the end. Now to do this to all of my keyframes manually in the graph editor would just be cumbersome and that's not really how I want to do that. So I'm going to show you an easier way of doing this. So I'm going to toggle off the graph editor and I'm just going to right click on the keyframes, select keyframe velocity, and you can just manually input the values. So for all of the arrival keyframe values, I'm going to set the incoming velocity influence to 80%. And then I'm going to set the departure keyframes outgoing velocity to 80% as well. And keep in mind that this is just for our Among Us red, blue, and orange layers. I'm not going to do anything to the fade on the talk bubble because I think that's fine just as it is. So now I'm just going to select all of our hidden layers and make them visible again so that we can zoom out and preview the more dramatic version of our animation. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, one flaw of our animation is that all of our characters are moving in perfect synchronization, which is something that would literally never happen in real life, so it makes the effect just a little bit unrealistic. Fortunately, this is incredibly easy to fix. All we have to do is go down to our timeline and offset our keyframes by just a small amount. So what I'm going to do is select Blue's rotation keyframes and move them forward by about five frames or so, and then do the same thing to orange, moving them just about five frames ahead of blue. And as you might expect, we'll do the exact same thing for our departure keyframes, dragging them backwards in time so that our characters will leave the frame in the reverse order that they arrived in. And what this does for the overall animation is give us a one, two, three, and then three, two, one effect, which I find looks quite nice. 
Now I do want to do just one more thing to our animation to give it just a little bit more personality, and that is to make it look like our orange character is shaking in place with fear. And this is actually a much easier effect to add in than you might think. All we have to do is go down to our layer panel and alt click on the stopwatch to get the expression editor, type the word wiggle, and then in between the parentheses, I'm going to write 50 comma two. And what this basically tells the position property is to wiggle or randomize itself at a speed of 50 over a distance of two pixels. In other words, giving the appearance of a shivering effect. So with that done, we can now zoom out once again and preview our final animation. So now you know how to make yourself look suspicious in your YouTube videos. Now normally on this channel I make videos about the science of creativity, just trying to help you guys become your most creative selves. But for those videos I do spend a lot of time in After Effects making animations because I just freaking love animation. So if you guys would like to see more After Effects tutorials like this one, let me know with the like button, let me know in the comments, I would be more than happy to make more of these in the future. But for now, thanks for being here, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and stay away from electrical.